give you all the glory we give you Everlasting Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration. We bow our head, we bow our hearts in honor and in worship of you, O oh God. Lord, receive our worship. Receive our gratitude. Receive our appreciation. Receive, O oh God, that which we have brought as a sacrifice unto you today. Thank you. Thank you for making us who you have made us. And thank you for helping us on our journey to becoming who you have made us to be. We give you glory again and again and again and again and again for the years past. For how you have brought us, O oh God, to this 15th year. And for where you are taking us, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You are not known for abandoned projects. So we know that this is not about to be an abandoned project. Thank you for the love that you have for each and every one of us in this meeting. Thank you, Father. You brought us here on purpose. For purpose. Thank you because no one will live, oh Lord God Almighty, short of what you have ordained for each one of us in the name of Jesus. Father, I step back this afternoon and I ask that you will do what you want to do. I ask, oh God Almighty, that leaves this lips of clay of mine, you will take them and you will use them for your glory. Thank you, Father, because I am only a messenger conveying your message. Thank you because the message you have ordained for your people, you yourself will help me to deliver it. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you for that person, oh Lord God Almighty, who this afternoon is in this auditorium right now. And in her heart, she's saying, this is not what concerns me right now. Just because, Father, she has an issue and is burdening her. And she's saying, Lord, you know that person. Because you revealed it, Father, locate her right now and resolve that issue in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray this afternoon. That lady, wherever she's seated, Father, surprise her now. Father, shock her in a way that she herself will not be able to believe. But God, do it. Do it according to the name of this fellowship. Father, we are able helpers. But you are the great enabler. Father, do it for her now in the name of Jesus. Thank you for helping this helper so that she will not be stranded. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Thank you, King of Glory. In Jesus' name. 
in Jesus name I can hear your voice in Jesus name I can hear your voice in Jesus name am I in the right place am I in the midst of able helpers are you sure all right so this afternoon you are going to help me right you are going to help me so I'll ask our mama and our papa to be seated and everybody standing. If you are not, um, even if you are pregnant, you should be able to stand up, right? And no sick person is here. If you are sick, I want you to have faith. Just stand up. As you stand up right now, healing will come in Jesus' name. And I just want you to celebrate grace. <laughs> celebrate our papa, celebrate mama. Oh, is this what you can do for all that they do? No, you are not connecting it. You are doing it because I asked you to do it. Do it like somebody who truly, truly appreciates them. Thank you, Lord. Sir and Ma, we appreciate you. Thank you for what you do in the kingdom. Thank you for what you do in the body. Amen? Men and women may not celebrate you, but God sees. God knows. And he knows how to reward us. He will reward you, son, man. Your efforts, your labor, your pulling out, your stretching out. All because you want our lives to be good. You want us to become who God has ordained us to be. Sir and ma, God will not leave you to yourself. Not only will all of us become, but God will not leave your own dragon. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I pray for you. Until I stepped on this altar, that word, that name of God didn't come to me. In your life. The things that you have confronted that looks bigger than you. In the name of Jesus. The Lord will increase the work of your hands. The Lord will bless you indeed. The Lord will decorate you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Where you think does not belong to you. I want to say to you this afternoon that God has prepared a seat for you there. And the Lord will pull your hand and bring you forward. I see you walking on the aisle, ma. And you are walking forward somewhere. I'm, I'm seeing it even as I'm talking. It's a middle aisle. You thought you shouldn't go forward, you know, to that place. But they beckoned on you and you were walking. And as you were walking, people were standing and they were clapping. What will lead you there today? I pray for you, ma. It will happen. God will connect you. He will give you the gifts of men. Okay. God will connect you. Connection is coming for you, ma. You know people. Yes. But life is in faces. And men are in sizes. And there is a door that each person opens for you. This next door, the person that will open it for you. Ma, this afternoon, because God is no respecter of persons and there is no distance in the realm of the spirit. As I speak, heaven hears. And I say, there shall be a connection. There shall be a connection. You won't have to work it out. You won't scheme for it. You won't manipulate for it. But it will happen. Your voice will be heard. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I want Papa to sit down while Mama stands up. Let me tell you. She said in leading a woman. It's tough. And I confirm it. I'm telling you. It's not only women. In leading people it's tough. But I confirm that in leading women in particular. Not because we are bad people. It's because we are good. It's tough. I was online at the KICC conference. If you know KICC, um, KICC in London, they're having a women conference ongoing right now. And I, the women, and I, and I, I've been logging on since it started. And yesterday, no, it was the day before yesterday, Pastor MC at the takeoff meeting said, she said, it's not easy. She said, to lead is tough. And I was like, were you in our service two Tuesdays ago? When I was saying to the people, leadership is tough. And I meant it from the core of my heart. Leadership is tough. So when Pastor Yamisi said it, I said, uh-uh, let me, let me backtrack. 
If people like this are saying leadership is tough, come on now. I'm talking about Pastor Matthew Ashimolowo's wife saying that leadership is tough. She said ha, that there are times she would want to give up. She said, but her husband will encourage her. You can do it. You can do it. People, leadership is tough. And it is because of that, this afternoon, I want us to celebrate the servant of God. <laughs> Who has given your mama the permission, the support, the, you know, the privilege, the access, the allowance to be able to lead us. We are not doing it well. I'm not impressed. And if I'm not impressed, I don't know whether God is impressed. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for allowing us to express ourselves. Thank you for allowing us to be molded. Thank you for allowing us to be. God bless you in Jesus' name. Before your eyes, we will become. You will look at the travail of your soul and you'll be glad in the name of Jesus. And you will not lose your crown that is waiting for you when you get there in a very far old age in Jesus' name. Now let's be seated. And as you are sitting down, I still have assignment for you. I think I'm talking to able helpers. And in my own understanding, able helpers, they don't frown. It is only those who are not able that frown. But when you are able, you know, you do it joyfully. Like the sister that came to announce the um, phone numbers, I mean the phone credits. Oh my God. Everything from her head to her toe is just speaking. Hallelujah. She was smiling. She was, you know, Calling the numbers with attitude. If you like, get it. If you like, don't get it. I'm in charge right now. Ah, I like your effigy and I like your... I just like it. Okay, so I want you to celebrate yourself. Wait. Wait. You know why? If you don't celebrate yourself in the midst of women, before you will find somebody to celebrate you, it will say... Because when you came this morning, somebody was looking at you. Ah, ah. Oh, God. A conference chair. Oh God. Hey, no lunch. And instead of the person to walk up to you to say you're looking cute today. The person just stay there and say, oh dear, I'm It doesn't make us bad. It's just that that's how we are wired. But I believe that today because we're exceptional women, by the time you hear the message that God has for us, all of this will change. We will become better. We, will be, we are becoming exceptional, right? That sister that is since she can't connect her eyes with you, there's a problem. So, don't wait for anybody to celebrate you, my darling sister. But there's a way by which we celebrate ourselves. There's a way by which we clap. Because of those who are at the back, I won't ask my people alone to do it. Otherwise, they would have shown you. So, I will show you. So, just look at me. When they say celebrate yourself, who are they saying you should celebrate? So, how can you be doing like this? To somebody else. So when you are celebrating yourself, you do like this. And then you are doing it with an attitude. Oh, more. Oh, wow. Holy God. You are trying. I'm telling you. Holy. Uh -huh. Honestly. Uh -huh. How did you get my coat like that? Uh -huh. Honestly. I'm feeling you, girl. Oh, yeah. Let's go. They don't like you, but you like yourself. Don't mind them. Let them be scoping you. I celebrate you. You are too much. Uh -uh. With all this effort. Uh -uh. You even do your face. Come on now. Hey. Uh -uh. This person that is not celebrating has issues. Watch your... Just look straight, okay? Let's do it one more time. Are you ready to celebrate yourself? Girl, I love you. You are doing well. You are doing well. I just love you. I love your vibes. Positive energy. No negative zone. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you excited this afternoon? Now jam your hands together and let's celebrate our enabler. Celebrate God. Hallelujah. God, we celebrate you. We hail you, Jehovah God. Amen. Pastor MC, thank you for having me here. I have always known that what will be great, the devil will try it. Hallelujah. If you know, you know. That gist is not for you. But those of us who know what we're talking about, we know. When something in your life will be great, the devil will try it. I saw a, banner, a post this morning on Instagram and I screamed. I screamed to myself. And then I cropped it and sent it to my 21 women that I'm coaching. They're supposed to be 22. 
but let's leave the other one. 21 women that I'm coaching for 2022. I sent it to them. That banner says, I need to read it to you. And if you can write, please write it down. Because if you are going to be exceptional, this is relevant to you. Hallelujah. Are we together? Able helpers, are we together? So you are going to be helping me with your responses. You are going to be speaking up. Thank you, Jesus. Good. I need my able helper for the eyes. Because you can't help me in that area. Good. So write this down, please. It says, your path is more difficult. Your path, P-A-T-H, is more difficult because your calling is higher. Your path is more difficult because your calling is higher. Make it happen. Make it happen. Shock everyone. Did you write it? I'll dictate it again. Your path is more difficult because your calling is higher. The path is P-A-C-H. Your path is more difficult because your calling is higher. Make it happen. Shock everyone. Do you have it? So let's read it together. Read what you wrote. Let's go. You are Good, I like that. Personalize it. Say, my path is more difficult because my calling is higher. I will make it happen. I will shock everyone. Hallelujah. Please do not resign to faith. Be an exceptional woman. Shock everyone. They said you won't get there. Why are you conforming? They said you can't make it. Why are you agreeing? Some few people know me that when they say it's not, it's not possible, that is when my head carries fuel. Who says so? So, coming here today, the devil didn't want it to happen, but I said, no way, it will happen. So right now, as I'm here, we are shocking the devil. And I know I didn't come here by myself. You heard what she said. She said, she asked the Lord who to bring. And since January, they showed my face. Ah, I want to use that to pray for somebody. I want to make it a prophetic declaration. Because they didn't contact me in January. So I didn't know I'll be here. But she, they told her since January. What you are worried for that the Lord has already prepared for you. May there be a connection right now. What you are still crying about that God has already resolved. May there be a connection now. Where you do not know you will even get to. But which God has already ordained. I prophesy over your life. You will get there. You will shock the devil. You will shock the devil. You will shock the devil. You will break status quo. In the name of Jesus. You will not conform. It will not be for you as the enemy has planned. It will not turn out in your life as Satan has scripted it. What God has ordained for you. Whether you know about it or you don't know about it. Is coming to happen for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Can I say that? The God who is making this to happen right now is making things happen in your life. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Where you don't think you can get to, the Lord Almighty will take you there. That amen is lame. Hallelujah. I just know that I'm supposed to be here. And I'm glad, like she's glad, that I am here. And this has got nothing to do with anything than God. And God bears me witness. Whilst we were coming, I logged on. And so, I watched the streaming. And I heard Mama preach. 
How many people were blessed by her message? She was challenging us, right? She was challenging us to become better. She was saying to us that there is more on the inside of us that we have not discovered. She said the lady that came to do the, um, is it chance we call it? Was that it? She said it was during COVID though. Yes. When everybody thought nothing was happening. Somebody was at home. God was pulling something out of her. There's somebody under the sound of my voice. You're looking at yourself and you think the end of you has come. There's something on the inside of you. As I'm speaking, may the Lord pull it out for you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. But please listen to me before I start. I want to say to you that the message that he has given me may not be a shouting message for you. It's not even likely to be. I just want to say it ahead so that you won't say, ah, I heard what she preached and I had to speak in the car to say, I'm grateful to God, the one who leads, the one who makes us to hear when he's speaking. Because sometimes, you know, we're human beings. You want to do your own thing. As I took time to wait on him and preparing for this conference, my heart, I want you to look at me as I speak. As I began, sir, my heart was going in the direction of Proverbs 31 because she's the example of an exceptional woman, true or false, like Mama has said. But as I want to go there, I will find that invisible power pulling my heart and gravitating it towards another direction. As I'm following that direction and I'm typing out, I will remember again, I would want to pick an extract from Proverbs 31. He will move me back and he will show me something else in the direction of where he's taking me. And I was wondering, this should be a message that you preach in your own house, on your platform. Doesn't really look like a conference message because conference comes. You are a speaker. You live. And every speaker really wants a good memory of themselves, right? And I'm like, but I said, whatever you want. And as I was doing it, he was speaking to me. I was sober. Oh, somebody hear me? So, it seems as if this is the mode you are going to take till I finish and he instructs me to do something else. But I'm begging you, with all that is in me that he has ordained, that you please give attention to this. Let not your neighbor sleep. You know why? We can shout from today till tomorrow. We can hear the possibilities and the potentials that we carry. We can, we, prophecies can come out. Word of knowledge can come out. And you can be told that tomorrow morning, a million will hit you in the house. If it is what God has ordained. Because we will not lie. And you know what? All of those will be good. But let me tell you, when we don't know how to connect the dots to the blessings that God has ordained for us, that is the reason why we remain on the same level. That is the reason why year in, year out, is looking as if everything is about struggle. Do you want to continue to struggle? I don't want to struggle. Even though struggle sometimes brings us into the center of the will of God. And I believe that the struggles that you have been through is the reason why God is sending you this message. I call him Oba Fini Mono, Oba Fonomoni. It is one thing for you to be shown the way. It is another thing for the way to be clear, for the way itself to attract you. Because sometimes they say, turn right, sir. When you get there, you are looking at it. That road just suddenly presents itself. Crowd will just be on that street that you cannot even see the signage that they told you to look at to know that that's where they say you should turn. That means that that street hid itself from you. The next step you are supposed to take will not hide from you in the name of Jesus Christ. So are you going to follow me through this message? I beseech you. So my first statement on this subject matter is an exceptional woman is a wow woman. An exceptional woman is a wow woman. Is a woman that you see and you say, wow. Somebody say, wow. wow. 
Eh, eh, because I said we should be sober, does not mean we should not talk. It's soberliness of the heart. Somebody say, wow. wow. Look at your neighbor and say, wow. wow. I'm looking for somebody to connect with. I always connect with somebody when I'm ministering. Yeah. Thank you. You just, uh, uh, you just, you see that. That's an exceptional one because she did it and she did it in my direction. Okay, so my connect. Wow. You see that person, you say, wow. How many people know Joy Girl adverts? Thank you, Pastor. I was just going to say that, that. Do you know? They can't raise their hand. Wow. That's even exceptional. You say, wow. You don't know Joy Girl adverts? Joy Girl. Then she'll be twisting and twisting. And everybody will be turning like this and saying, wow. Can I shock you? Maybe it will not be a shock. That is what the world knows as, a, as exceptional. When we use our body to attract people. She'll be twisting. They'll be looking at her because she's bathed with joy soap. I remember no joy soap. I remember I see using joy soap till today. Joy in len, len, ben. But I want to say to you, my sister, you are a wow woman. Exceptional women are wow women. Am I talking to an exceptional woman? Yes. Look at another exceptional woman and say, wow. <laughs> and I know that this conference has started, you know, since um, Thursday. And women in leadership, you know, women in the leadership space had been addressed at some point, And your mama is a leadership guru. So I can imagine all the things that she has dug up. She must have done a lot of um, um, definitions. Even this morning, well, this afternoon when I was listening to her, she was doing definition. But I still trust God that we're going to ride, you know, on God's agenda. Now, God wants you and I to be exceptional. And that is why he has made this conference theme to be exceptional. I mean, God wants you to be a wow woman. I want you to give me attention. Please don't be distracted because I want this message to resonate with you. God did not call the conference for all of us to attend and just hear speakers and then they go. Every year they come. Mommy Ade Lakun was here. Mommy Ade Bibi has been here. Um, Pastor Fola Chidume has been here. These are powerful women of God. May their deposit in our lives not be in vain. In the name of Jesus. I know there's Thanksgiving tomorrow, you know, so there's a lot going on. But in the midst of the Lord, I have been sandwiched into the middle just to give you the connection. Hallelujah. God means business this year and he has put this thing before us to challenge our status quo. I don't know how you came in here, but God wants to shake you. God wants to challenge you. He wants to move you further into his will. Hallelujah. And I know, like that comedian would say, so when your mama said this, I was like, yes. <laughs> God is speaking. How many people know Mr. Macaroni? Uh -huh. You know, he would say, you are doing well. You are doing... So really, I acknowledge and I celebrate you. You are doing well. You are doing well. Yeah, so celebrate yourself now. I say you are doing well. Nobody will clap for you. Ah, celebrate yourself. Are you not doing well? Look, when people were stepping up and I was looking at their t-shirt and people said, I said, even this t-shirt, don't make it. It's shiny. Girl, you are doing well. Your hairstyle, you are doing well. To turn up this money, you are, you are not the only one that saw the flyer. And these are not all the members of Able Helpers, are they? But you turned up. Girl, you are doing well. God is calling you, however... To be exceptional. You ain't doing badly, but God is asking you to be exceptional. God is calling us to an exceptional living. An exceptional life. Not an exceptional event. This conference in the midst of all the years, perhaps will be an exceptional one. But Ma, he's calling you to an exceptional living. To an exceptional life. Not just a one-time exceptional. Not just intermittent being exceptional. God is calling you to an exceptional life. And so I'm going to take my first scripture from Matthew chapter 5 and verse 20. And I'm going to be reading some translations that you may not be familiar with. And if you are familiar with it, please let's do it together. 
I'll take my first scripture from Matthew chapter 5, verse 20. The first part of verse 20. I'm reading from easy translation. It says, I tell you this. You must always do what is right. You must live in a way that is better than the teachers of God's law and the Pharisees. Did you hear that? I'll read it again. I tell you this, you must always do what is right. You must live in a way that is better than the teachers of God's law and the Pharisees. Mommies, aunties, sisters, ladies, friends, our uncles, our brothers, and our father who is here. God is calling all of us to live in a way that is much more than regular. Somebody say, much more than regular. Oh, I'm not feeling you. Much more than regular. Help me to preach. Much more than regular. You and I cannot conform to the status quo any longer. It is time to go the extra, extra mile. It is time to go beyond the ordinary. It is time to go beyond your immediate. It is time to go the extra, extra mile. By the grace of God, I live in Lagos. I don't live in Ibadan. And so coming to Ibadan was an extra mile for me, isn't it? It's not any location within Lagos. Yet, it pleases God to say go. And I have signed pact with him. Wherever you send me, I will go. I have an ongoing in my life that should not even make me want to do anything. I have an ongoing that should say, okay, even if I'm going to, let it not be too far from around me so that I get done with it and I'm out. And I'm not here to celebrate myself. But again, I say to you, if they don't celebrate you, you celebrate yourself, right? But then, there's a call to come all the way from Ibadan. And if you're going to be an exceptional woman, ma, you will go beyond the ordinary. Somebody say, I will go beyond the ordinary. Remember the quote that you wrote down. You will make it happen when they say you can't do it. They say, ah, that's how she does. Uh, she won't show up, but you will show up. Yeah. They will say, uh, she can't get the answer to it, but that occasion, you will get the answer to it. Yeah. They will say, uh, she will not be able to contribute. You will say, not, uh, not me. Not anymore. You will make sure. I didn't say steal. I didn't say sell your body. I didn't say do the wrong thing. Say we should learn to do what is right. You will turn to God and you will say, God, make me exceptional. And he will break the barrier for you. They said you, you, in your, maybe your shop, your office, your staff, if you have one, or your neighbors, say, uh, it's only one customer that we enter her space all day. But you will get there on Monday. You will speak into the atmosphere. You say, I call you forth from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west. Customers are entering this store. They are buying what I have. And today, I will shock those who say I cannot sell more than one item. Is somebody listening to me? To be exceptional is to break the bar. Is to go beyond the ordinary. In the book of John chapter 16 and verse 12, the New International Reader's Version, John 16, 12. The Bible says, I have much to say to you. It is more than you can handle right now. I have more to say to you, but it is more than you can handle right now. And in a situation like this, the psalmist will say, Selah, meaning, think about it. How can God say he has more to say to me, but I can't handle it? That at this level where I am, I can't handle it. Remember what we said. I will handle it. God, I can handle it. Somebody say, God, I can handle it. Oh, I'm not feeling you. Should I go and sit down? How can God have something in mind and he says you can't handle it? How can God wants to bless you and he says she can't handle it? Because the one we blessed her last year is the reason why she has not been coming to church. 
The one we blessed her two years ago is the reason why she and Pastor Yemi see they have now become mates. Is somebody listening to me? Somebody say, God, I can handle it. If you can handle it, you will say it well. God, I can handle it. I heard Pastor Yemi see when she was talking about the virtuous, the virtuous woman, the Proverbs at the one woman, saying that her husband's heart safely trusts in her. And she was saying, how can your husband not be able to trust in you? How can they not, how can they not be able to commit something to you and they call you able helpers? Ah, we should dissociate from such people. They are not part of our fellowship. Because whatsoever Adam named it, that he bore. When he say you bear a name, it means you live according to the name. So if they call me able helper, I must be able to help. Amen, somebody. If they call me able helper, I say I must be able to what? Help. So if you are helping your husband, his heart must be able to trust in you. Hallelujah. So if God is saying, I have much more to say to you, it is more than you can handle right now. Somebody again, one more time, say, I can handle it. Your present status quo, the Lord says, cannot handle what he has in stock. In the next one year for able helpers, God say what he wants to do. Where you are right now, the state where you are right now, your status quo, your disposition, you can't handle it. And you are still keeping quiet. Somebody say, I can handle it. <laughs> if I say I'm not giving you something, shouldn't you convince me why I have to give you? Should you keep quiet? Your people say to Badake Tari Abedake. So if they say you cannot handle it, it is the assessment. I will say I can handle it. But because it is God talking, I will say, God, help me. I can handle it. If you will teach me how, I will handle it. And that is what God wants to show us. I want you to open your Bibles with me. On your device in particular. Especially if you have U version Bible. And I'm going to take a very lengthy read from Easy Translation. If you can get Easy Translation. But if you can't get Easy Translation. Open your Bible if you have your Bible. Read whatever version, whatever translation. Or it can be you know, streamed for us. Just read it. But follow me. Or if you don't have Easy Translation. So that you don't get confused. Listen to me. Because I want to read it to you in this translation. Are we ready? And because I'm going to be picking verses, it may be difficult for you to follow if it's on the screen. So please follow me as I read. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 5. Write it down. Matthew chapter 5. I'm going to read verse 21 to 24. Verse 27 to 30. Verses 33 to 34. 38 to 39. And 43 to 48. The reason why I'm doing that is not because I want to confuse you, but because it's such a lengthy read, I can't read all. So I would suggest you go and read Matthew 5 from verse, from verse 21. Or you can read the entire chapter. And I'm reading from Easy Translation and it reads. Jesus went on to say. Are we together? I want our attention. No distraction. Jesus went on to say. You know the rule that God gave to your ancestors. You must not kill anyone. Any person who does not kill someone will stand in. Any person who does kill someone will stand in front of a judge. The judge will punish him because he has done a wrong thing. Verse 22. But what I now say to you is this. Anybody who is angry with his brother will have to stand in front of a judge. Or someone might call his brother by a bad name. Then he will have to stand in front of the Jewish leaders. They will judge him. But someone may say to his brother, you are a fool. God will judge that person. So that you can understand the scripture I'm reading. He's saying that the rule that God gave to our ancestors, one of the rules was you must not kill anyone. If you kill somebody, you will be taken to the court of law. They will judge you. Jesus is now saying, yes, that's the norm. That's the regular. And as bad or as tough or as the height of that, he said, but, so when you hear but, please, Take note. He said, but what I say to you now, apart from that, is that to be exceptional. Hear what he said. He said, any person, he said, but what I now say to you is this, anyone who is angry with his brother will have to stand, <laughs> will have to stand in front of a judge. He said, or someone might call his brother by a bad name. Then he will have to stand in front of the Jewish leaders. 
That's what the law says. Then he will have to stand in front of Jesus that they will judge him. But, new status quo. Someone may say to his brother, you are a fool. God will judge that person. Are you with me? It says, but someone may say to his brother, you are a fool. God will judge the person. God may punish him in the fires of hell. Just because you called your brother a fool. 23. Maybe you go to God's great house to give your gifts to God. You take it to the altar. But then you remember that your brother is angry with you. You must leave your gift there in front of God's altar. First, you must go and find your brother. Tell him that you are sorry. Then you can both become friends with each other again. After that, you can return to the altar and give your gift to God. Somebody following me? Verse 27, Jesus went on to say, you know what God's rule says. You must not have sex with anyone who is not your husband or your wife. But what I tell you is this. A man may look at a woman who is not his wife and he may want to have sex with her. In his thought, he has had sex with her. So he has done a wrong thing. If your right eye leads you to do wrong things, then you should take it out. You should throw it away. Yes, you will lose one eye, but it will be much worse if you keep your whole body and God throws you into hell. Also, if your right hand leads you to do wrong things, then you should cut it off. You should throw it away. You will lose one hand, but it will be much worse if you keep your body in one piece and go to hell. Verse 33. You also know the rule that God gave to our ancestors. If you make a promise to God, you must do what you have said. But what I tell you is this. Do not use any name to make a promise stronger. Do not use the words by heaven to make a promise stronger. Heaven is the place where God rules. Do not use the words by the earth to make a promise stronger. The earth is the place where God rests his feet. Verse 38. Jesus went on to say, you also know that God's law says, if somebody destroys your eye, then you should destroy that person's eye. If somebody destroys your tooth, then you should destroy that person's tooth. But what I tell you is this, if somebody does something bad to you, do not do anything against him. Somebody may slap you on one side of your face. Then you should also let him slap you on, one, on the other side of your face. Verse 43. You have heard people say, love the people who are your friends, but hate those who want to hurt you. What I tell you is this. You should love the people who want to hurt you. If, you, if people want to give you pain, pray for them. Pray that God will help them. If you live like this, you will show that you are really children of your father above. God is kind to everyone. He causes the sun to shine on everyone, both good and bad people. He causes the rain to fall on everyone. People who obey him and people who do not obey him. Verse 46, do you only love people who love you? God will not give you good things just for doing that. Even the men who take taxes love their friends. If you are only kind to your friends, then you are not doing anything special. You are not being exceptional. Even people who do not believe in God do that. So you must do good in every way as your father above is good in every way. Hallelujah. Oh my God, what a lengthy read. Even me, I felt it in my chest. Amen? In Matthew chapter 5 and verse 20, the first part, he says, I tell you this, you must always do what is right. I read it to us before. You must live in a way that is better than the teachers of God's law and the Pharisees. And all of these things I just read to you is what God, is what Jesus was referring to. And this is the insight to what God at this conference is calling you and I to. This is the dot. This is the road that connects you to being exceptional. Ma, do you know that sometimes somebody wants to help you, but you refuse that help? Has it happened before? No, I want to see your hand. Able helpers, are we still helping me? 
Okay. Raise your hand if you are following me. Somebody wants to help you, you just refuse. Time will not permit me to ask you why you refuse. But I'll give you the context from which I'm saying this. You know, somebody wants to help you, but you know that once they help you, the whole world will hear. Do you like such help? No. Do you take such help? No. Sometimes you are really desperate. So, you know, you, want, you, you, you now have to take it. But you know, honestly, there are some people, they are tough. They will like, rather than for me to allow my name enter social media because of your help, I'd rather be here. Shawambi? Can you call Kyle your brother because you want to eat cow? Simply because you are hungry. I know we are hungry right now, aren't we? Uh -huh. I heard when Mama was saying they are going to serve us jollof rice and there is some Allah. We must eat it with cutlery. I heard all of that. So if I say, if you are, okay, they were sharing credits now. If that sister, when she got here, she said, stand up. Kneel down. Raise your hand. Sit down. Thank you, sir. That initial card in Eluani go. Kiwani. Because you want to do good. Hallelujah. God said I should come and deliver this message to you. Auntie, should I come down? I want to speak into your ears. God says He has already prepared your bundle package. God says he does not have a problem to elevate you. God says it's already reserved. Just as the food we are eating here, see the table now is set. And we have enough. So you don't even need to rush. But ma, that is the reason why they say you must hear this word first before you eat that food. It's a pro prophetic action. God says you come and deliver this tough message that I'm delivering this afternoon. That to be exceptional is what I'm about to share. You want to be exceptional in your business? You've got to first of all be exceptional here. It's not today. I have always said it. If I want to spend my money in your business, sir, and you are rude to me, I walk out. You can say I'm proud, but me, Mosai Daima Binu. Many years, as in, it's many years ago I've been saying, I said, customer service is king. How can you be so rude? You want my money? But you are rude. You want favor from me? But you are rude. I come into your store, not even in the age where we are, where people are sitting in their homes or sitting far away from where you are and they're making money online. Then I carry myself, I come into your store and you are rude. Forget that business. I'm not doing business with you. People I don't know, I have transacted with them online. I still bought something online. And I was almost going to switch, but then I said, be an exceptional woman, ignore. Just go ahead. Don't look at what she has done. I'm asking you a question. You're telling me, I've told you that. You know, there's a way somebody sends you a short, sharp message. You can pick the body language. I wanted to reply her in the normal, regular way, and I will not be offended. However, as an exceptional woman, Jesus says, even tax collectors will do that now. Any woman would do that. Even a child would do that because she spoke to you anyhow. So it's okay. You will speak to her. But to be an exceptional woman. There's a sticker that says, Moya, look away. I know this is going to shake tables. Eh, something, something, Dami Leyinu. Mafola. Adieba Dami Leyinu. Thank you, sir. I know in Ibadan, it cannot be a problem. Do you understand what I mean? Somebody is coming. Hey, hey. She's already late for administration and she was coming. She used her body to hit your table. And the food you have been waiting for since, he poured. And you just get up and you just jacked up. What is that? What's that? Look at my body. What? That's the normal look. That's the current status quo. That is the status quo in the days when the law was there. And the law said, take them to Pastor Yemisi. Pastor Yemisi will deal with your leaders. They will deal with the person. But then that happened. And you are an exceptional woman. Just say, let me overlook it. Because she will not deliberately come and hit me. It is because she was in a hurry. It is true she hits me. 
but there must be a reason why she hits me. God is calling for your extra sense. And your extra sense is the Holy Spirit that makes you to process things. Oh, yesterday, after we've been coming since Thursday, we were here on Thursday, Daddy. On Friday, we came. They said we should come and pray. We prayed. The ambassador does leadership something. They said we are coming again today. Pastor Yemisi could not say thank you to us when we were going home yesterday. Oh, that's Unika Jide La Roy. Ah, Allah, what my lawyer, Bambi. It is true she didn't say thank you, but have you ever wondered? Did you hear what she was sharing? She said, how today will fix? As at yesterday, she didn't know. He said, all of a sudden, God began to speak to her, what to put together, who to call. And that's why we are seated here nicely today. But you see, when you have leaders, you think they always have it together. You think that since last year now, she... Because she knew she would do this conference where so everything is already set. Wow. So let me say, I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. My people are here to bear witness. And she said, she said, I will be calling the people that I have raised to bear me witness. I know how it is to plan a conference, please. I know how you have a budget of 10 million, but you don't even have 1 million. Yes. Our ministry is about to possess a property. I will not tell you the amount because you will run out. And if I say you will say, ah, that woman has money. A bad job. What's up? No. Okon kuru nisha. I should know. But let me tell you, that property is a done deal. <laughs> that property is a done deal. My people, note it that when we want to dedicate, we will invite Pastor Yemi. See? And she will come with some of you because that property is a done deal. Ah, property, yes, a don't deal. Because you will do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ever imagine or think. But when I just say it like that, you'll be like, come on. And then later you heard how much we bought it. I said, oh, God. Ah, I want to go to Let me change my ministry, eh, Joe. You don't know. That life is not about the end. It's more about the process. And so the message the Lord has sent me to come and share with you as a person today is the message of process. It's not so much about what I want to get. This is what I want. But it took me to come from there and to bend my knees to come down the step and to move in this direction. Even though the camera is in this direction. And any normal person wants to be in the face of the camera. To be seen. But God says go into hiding. Be exceptional. You don't need to let them see you. So that they will know you are doing something before you accomplish. You can walk from the back. Be an exceptional woman. There are people who are sent to the front. Let them be there. But even the people sent to the front, don't do carry me that you are in the front. Be exceptional. That is what God is seeking. He is helping us to connect the dots. Again, I want to say to you, aunties, there is no problem to give you this. Is there anything too hard for him to do? Auntie, I know I'm going to touch somebody right now. And I apologize ahead, but that's what he put in my heart. You are trusting the Lord for the fruit of the womb. And it does not cost God anything to open your womb. I've heard some mind-blowing testimonies in the last two weeks. Ma, hysterectomy was done. They took out womb. Took out cervix. Packed everything, took it out for somebody. Yet, when the Lord turned to that person... The Lord decided to replace the womb, replace the cervix, replace everything. And she suddenly became pregnant. And got back to the same hospital where it was removed. The same doctor that removed it saw her and said, ha. Call the nurses that were there. Say, ha. Did we not remove it? I'm trying to say to you, ma. I said that they were our lack of extra, our disposition, our character, our behavior, our attitude, our gorong gorong, our guru guru, our regularity. 
How can you be regular and be serving an exceptional God? You must imitate, you must be, it's not even imitate, you must be like. Elephant gives birth to what? Why should God give birth to less of God? Thank you. Does somebody understand what I'm saying? So, Ma, you are here. The Lord is saying, you're trusting him for the fruit of the womb. He said, but your dealings with your husband is less of exceptional. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He said, it's not that the man is right. I want this person to hear. It's not for everybody, but God is speaking to somebody. He said, he's not saying the man is doing right. He said, but as an exceptional woman, you can do better. After all, to be exceptional is to do better. Is to go the extra mile. The Bible says, I've always questioned that scripture when I was much younger. Honestly. And after a while, I stopped questioning it because you can't question God. He said that is how he wants it. But I didn't really understand it. But now I do. He said, when somebody slaps this here, turn the other one to I thought they would say we should run. Because the default should be you fight back. Right? So if I'm not going to fight back, I thought exceptional would be run away from there. They said, don't run, no. Turn the next one to him. Go to Ba. Auntie, let's try it now. <laughs> you don't want to be exceptional. I want to slap you on one leg. Maybe I should slap you first. I should not. And that is not meant in the literal sense. It simply means. I gave you this today. You didn't thank me. What will you do tomorrow? If I gave you, you just collected it. What did she do? I get now. I shouldn't give you again. Abi, is that not what you will do? People help us now. What will you do? Will you give her? You're giving her ten times. She didn't say thank you. What well, you will give her again? But the scripture says, give her. Yes, I know we'll be quiet, and it doesn't sound exceptional to you. But that is the message God said I should bring to you. He said, regular people safe. He used tax collectors because tax collectors, was, they were very mean. And still they mean now. Those who work in tax office, they are here. He said, they slap you in one ear, turn the other ear to them. I don't know whether you understand what God is saying to you. And I've said to somebody who wants to slap now, that is not literally. So you slap somebody, they slap you back. Don't come and call me. What he's saying is, don't take revenge. Don't because you did what is right to somebody. The person did not reciprocate. Then you stop. Rather, he said, you do good to somebody. They don't reciprocate. They even hate you. The person that you are fighting for, they are the ones talking against you. Women, am I talking to women? Yes. You know that is our stock in trade. The person that you are fighting for, the person that you are laboring for, they are the very people who first of all cause you pain? True or false? Has anybody experienced it? Yes. Why are you not answering? Or you are the person. You are the one causing people pain. He said, don't look at that. Continue to do what is right. He said, after all, the God that we claim is our father, the exceptional God himself. He said, he brings rain on the sinner and the righteous. Has it ever happened? You stand at challenge, bus stop. You are coming from Lagos. Another person is standing. Then God decides to bring rain. Or sunshine. And then he decides that on you rain. On the other person, sunshine. If it's raining in your area, it's raining in your area. I know that sometimes he stops the rain. At a particular place. Right? If it's not raining, it might be raining in that area. It's not raining in this area, I understand. But you can't be in the same house, under the same roof. And then it's raining on some people and it's not raining on you. Is it possible? If you can remember that. Ma, that is what it means to be exceptional. Am I speaking to somebody? And I'm going to show us three women. And I'll take my seat. Three women from scriptures. Follow me as I read. This is the message. I told you you won't be shouting. 
I wasn't shouting to when I saw it. God is calling us to live in a way much more than regular. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. Thank you, Father. Number one, Ruth. I mean, you know the woman Ruth, the lady called Ruth. Do you know the story of Ruth? Able yeah. helpers, are you here? Is he hunger? No. Even me, I've not eaten. No. Are you are you hungry? No. I mean, you know Ruth. You can't be a member of our fellowship and you don't know Ruth, because even your pastor, as I is a Ruth. She loves pastor, doesn't she? She's a Ruth. I didn't say so, Pastor. You are the one that said it. I said, yeah, it's not me. Oh. Ruth was a wow woman. Remember I said to you, exceptional women are wow women. And all of us, almost all of us know the story. Naomi was the mother-in-law of Ruth. And she had a sister-in-law called Oprah. And Ruth, Naomi had had trouble in the land where they moved to. Herself and her two daughters-in-law had lost their husbands. So the three of them were widows. And they were struggling. But Naomi heard that where they came from, as in she and her husband from Judah, life is beginning to get better. So she said to herself, Naomi, And so she decided she was going back. And she called them and said, I'm going back to Bethlehem. And they said, we're going with you, ma. We're going with you. And they packed their baggage and they were on their way. And suddenly, Naomi called them again and said, you know what? I've thought about it. And she began to explain the details to them, just in case you don't understand what I'm talking about. If I go back, you know that place, you guys are not supposed to enter there. But you are married to us, you're already married to us. They may allow you, but you are not likely to be able to marry. Who will marry you? Even if she becomes pregnant, she has another two boys. Will you be able to wait for, your, for the age mate of your own children that you're supposed to have had to marry them? So when she explained, she said, think about it. She said, Sila, think about it. Oprah said, Oto le soma. E paro. E she goni. You are a good mother. Thank you for explaining these things to me. Now I see. I think I will go back to my own place. And Naomi said, it is fine. And blessed her. Auntie, how about you? Otaku, only. I'm not going. I'm following you. She said, you can't. See your mate. She's already said she's going. Follow her. I pray for you. You will find a good man. She said, please, ma, with all due respect, please don't tell me to go back. He's grieving my spirit. I want to follow you. Your people will be my people. My God, your God will be my God. Please don't tell me to turn back from you. And you know what? Naomi realized that this girl means business. She ain't going nowhere. And Naomi said, okay, let's go. Who is the exceptional woman between Oprah and Ruth? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Why did you say so? Somebody who mortgaged her life not to have a husband, not to have a child. And the person who borrowed herself brain to go back to where she can be found. Who do you think is the exceptional woman? Did Oprah do bad? No. Did she do bad? No. But who is the exceptional woman? No. As I'm sharing these things, ma, don't just chorus what I'm saying. Don't just hear me. I want you to be looking inwards. Be looking at situations and circumstances in your life that you can apply this to. By the exceptional living and exceptional life of Ruth, she followed Naomi to Bethlehem. Guess what happened? Where they said she could not marry. She had made up her mind, if there is no marriage, no problem. She didn't just fold her arms. She said, we have to survive in this land. She began to look for how to make ends meet. And as she was doing that, the rewarder of exceptional life the rewarder of exceptional women made sure that there was a connection. He brought Boaz, connected, her to Ruth, connected him to Ruth, 
and Ruth by her exceptional living enlisted herself and her mother-in-law to the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. She fe kimba yin so toro. Won le ma ma gbole yin ni bi teti wa. Agbole yin le ma wori map badon pa pa. Won le ma mu adugbo yin. But ma, if you become exceptional, you can put your village. You can put your father's house on the map. Your father's house can come on Google map. Am I speaking to somebody? Just because you chose to be exceptional. I have a friend. She's been my friend since primary school. We were very close in primary school. This is not claiming somebody. We were friends. We've been friends now for over 40 years. And when she did school search, she didn't pass. They sent her to a shorthand and typing school. Can you understand that? Okay, okay. I didn't say computer school. But type, type, type. And she said in her family, she was like the black sheep. Everybody went to school. She didn't go to university. At the end of, you know that kind of person, they say, she just marry and go. Mm. And they gave her a short hand typing, so at least something will be coming in. And she got married. And the problem started. One fee I show me obey. She said they will trek. You can't, because it's in Lagos. I don't know how I can describe it. Maybe trek from Bodija to this place. Coming from church, they live in Bodija. They will trek to this place. Sir. That's the kind of trekking they used to trek with their children. She said, no car. The day they even have car, car we break down. All manner of things. So let me bore you with that. They were struggling. But I tell you, you know the person I'm talking about. One day came. Her husband gave her 1,000 naira. And said, this is the last card. What can we what can you cook? She said, there is no food in the house. Okay, so the only money I have is 1,000. So said, please make something. She said, listen to me, women. You will relate with this. They give you 1,000. Sir, it's like giving us 10,000 today. It's nothing, no. You hear, sir? Yes. Yes. 10,000 is nothing. I lie. They gave her 1,000 naira. She said, when she collected that 1,000, you knew she was upset. She said she wanted to call him back. I said, "Yeah, time we be in full, I won't worry, happy." Which will be the norm for any upset woman? How can we be suffering like this? Will you to even give food money? You don't. She said that was what was coming to her. Let me tell you, in all of her story, that is the bit of it I like the most. Why? I like people who can be vulnerable to you. I don't like people who come and pose like everything always goes well for them. She told us. Because the scripture says, there's no temptation that befalls you that is not but common to man. So what is going on in your life is going on in somebody else's life. Is how we all react to it that is different. And the Bible says, that for whatever is going on in your life, there's always a way of escape. Anyway, she said, she found grace with God to suppress herself. And the man just left the house. She was upset. After getting upset, she now sat down and began to think, what will I do? And it came to her. Buy beans and do moi moi. It was a Friday. And I remember that in my own house, we eat moi moi Friday night. We used to. My children have revolted, so I don't bother anymore. So she did moi moi. Long story short, by that moi moi that she did, they were able to eat that day. But that was the beginning of our exceptional living. Doing my mind that day, another test for her was that that night, her sister-in-law came. And in the days when they just married her, you know she was a short and typing girl. Meanwhile, she married into a family where they speak phonetics. So her sister-in-law used to correct me. More like, I said more like, I didn't say they said it directly. More like, So they would correct her. They would, but that sister-in-law came that day. She said, and she remembers that this is our last. He said, again, what she would have done was to hide her moi moi. 
But as they came, ah, sis, can you have you? Can you have you with her friend? Sometimes you need to be cheerful even when you don't want to be cheerful. Because you don't know the door your smile will open. Exceptional living, is that what we're talking about? You may not feel like it. Like I didn't feel like coming to Ibadan. I really shouldn't be in Ibadan. And I'm not saying that so that you can celebrate me in a special way. I'm just using it as an example. But you go the extra mile. She said, what should I serve you? What should I serve you? And then she served them the moi moi. And the sister-in-law came with a friend. Not even one mouth, two mouths. But the friend ate the moi moi or they took it away. And called her friend later to say, your sister-in-law, what did she use to make money? Can she make for me? And sent money. They asked her how much. That is 1,000. They sent another 1,000. That was how she started my money business. From my money business. It's a long story. But anyway, what I want to say to you is that the person who didn't have money, who it is 1,000 that there was their last card, the person who they trek to church, they used to trek to church, the person who had been through all of that went to White House and served Michelle Obama. Moi, moi. Did you hear what I said? So in case the Bible story I'm using for you is confusing you. In case you are saying the grace in the Bible days is different. I just gave you a real life Maybe when next I'm coming here, I will bring her here. But when you come for our dedication of our, of our Ellen place, you will see her there. She's always with me. She's my friend. So it's not a story. I touch her flesh and blood. I still saw her last week. But let me bring out what I want to bring out in her story. She could have spoken anyhow to her husband. The 1,000. And... They will resolve it because So sometimes when you are misbehaving, you don't call it misbehavior. You say, do you know the pressure I'm going through? Especially in this age and time with all the mental health issue. I am not denying the, the issue of mental health. I'm not denying it. Especially on women, there's a lot of pressure. There is a lot of pressure. There is a lot of pressure. And that is why you need to belong to a holy caucus. You need to belong to a fellowship where they help you to detox. You need to be in the right company of people where you can bear your mind. Where sometimes you are not even bearing your mind. What they are sharing is helping you to detox. Where you can relate with what they are saying. Where it is not fake. Where your mama can stand on the altar at the 15th um, year anniversary at the, at the conference and she's saying, Ha, ah, I didn't know how to get her. Ah, then you say, Mama, thank you. Looking very well, Mama, she might get me. But she can be vulnerable. When she says that, that will help you to know that in that your business, the things that you couldn't reach, there's a possibility to reach it. If my mama can reach the goal she wants to get to, I can. Oh, so she struggles as well then you know that your struggle is not peculiar to you. These are the things that help you to declutter and, you know, and detox. Is somebody listening to me? Yes, ma'am. And that was how my friend became the exceptional woman. Nobody before her, nobody after her has taken my money into White House. Not only did she take it, she told me, she said, when, I said, how did you feel? I when they called her. She said, when she came out, they said, it was, they were having a conference as well. She said, she didn't even know she would talk to, she would stay. She said, but she came and she hugged her and she said, she just carried the moimoy and just said. And then she looked at it. She said, looking at it is enough because she cut it, you know, like cake. It's not, you know, they, they diced it like cake and put it there and put up, she shall garnished it and it was looking nice and she held it. She said that she even commented is enough. She said, but then, she said, would you like to have? And then she took. The people you are not supposed to talk to, they already told her. When she comes out, they already told her the etiquette of the White House. But the God of exceptional living, who knows all the sacrifices, the extra miles that this lady had been going through, made sure the protocol was broken for her. 
Therefore, Michelle spoke to her. They have picture together. She tasted moi moi of Africa. I mean moi moi of Nigeria. The same moi moi that you make in the house and you think is nothing. I heard your mama when she was saying you've got something on the inside of you. Ma, there's something inside of you. But I am here this afternoon. I told you he sandwiched me in between different kind of messages that will propel you to becoming an exceptional woman. And what he sent me to come and show you, they can tell you this. She told you something. The next speaker will tell you something. But this is the connection. Where your character and your right living is not in place, may opportunities not bypass you. I won't go to my notes. I want to go and sit down because I know my time is up. The next person I want to mention is a lady called Jael. Do you know the story of Jael? There was war. And Deborah and a guy called Barak were pursuing after the enemy of the land called Caesarea. And they had, you know, fought him at the battleground. Deborah was there interceding. Um, Barak was the one pursuing. Pastor, if I'm wrong, let me to be telling the real long power. <laughs> was the one pursuing and, <laughs> and then had struck, you know, attempted to strike Caesarea and all of that. Caesarea got exhausted by the pursuit and he began to run. And he ran away from the war zone. When you run away from the war zone, you think you are free. But he realized that he cannot run to his own place. He now remembered that they have a family friend, you know, we did in that nation. And so he ran. And as he was coming, Jael was the wife of his friend, of the friend of his boss. And Jael was there by the window. He said, open the door, open the door. And Jael opened the door. That was the enemy. How many of you can open the door for your enemy? How many of you will open the door for your enemy? How many of you will do your enemy good? Won't you be saying, Don't enter, don't enter, don't enter. And then she allowed him in. And the man said, give me, give me water. She didn't give water. She gave milk. Sir, she didn't just give milk. He, she gave cold milk. Ha! So to somebody who is exhausted, who was dying. Gave cold milk. As he took the milk, all his tentacles relaxed. And he said, I want to lie down. Let me, he said, ah, lie here, sir. Lie here, sir. And she, I don't know what, I wish, man, when we get to heaven, we'll see Jael. I want to ask Jael, ma, what was going on in your mind? What were you thinking about? Um, let me tell you the truth. It is with benefit of hindsight that such things make sense. She didn't plan it ahead. The people who had a war plan did not kill Caesarea. She had no war plan. She was at home. She was a housewife. How many housewives are under the sound of my voice? Raise your hand, though. If you don't raise your hand. I'm a housewife. Raise your hand. You sit at home. I call them sit at home, mom. I actually don't call them. Sit at home, mom. You do school run. You are taking care of the children. You are taking care of the home from. Wave your hand. Auntie, I see your own. Why are you not raising it anymore? You raise your hand now. Sit at home, mom. Yes, it's the same. You just, as in, you are on the home front. You are the home manager. Wave your hand. They will help us. Okay. So you are the only one, my darling. So you have a business you do. You are not a housewife. So no housewife here. Ha, ah, I wanted to set somebody up. Where? She didn't raise her hand down. She just missed it. I was honestly, because I was going to say she should come. Auntie, sit down. It is well. Do you understand? That was who Jael was. But I don't know what was going on in that lady's brain. To have said, lie down, lie down, lie down. And gave him milk. And the guy, somebody who is tired. And you know how men do now. The one that did not even run on the war front safe. Once they come back from work, and you manage to give them food. <sighs> We did, did we say that? We're sorry. Exceptional women don't say that. <laughs> and the man began to snore. He said, "Hey, eh? The one the whole of Israel is looking for in my house. I, normally, if you, if you perform that feat, you will run out to go and call them. But she thought to herself, if I run out before I call them, if he goes and call, what waiting do me? I'm an exceptional woman. Went and looked for what to use. 
If you are not used to using anything, there will be nothing to use for you on the day of warfare. Yes. But because she was a skilled woman, she had been putting her hand to doing things, even though she was doing from home. She went and she looked for that stick. Some versions will tell you it was iron. I read a version yesterday that said it was a stick. Whether it was a stick or plastic or iron, I don't care. Bottom line that she had a weapon, something she had, and she nailed that thing right into the guy's head and nailed him to the ground. And the guy died. A man couldn't kill him on the field. And as she stepped out, she saw Barak coming. He said, come and see the person you are looking for. That was how Jael became a Bible personality. Who would have known her? Who would have known your father's house? But for the fact that today you are becoming an exceptional woman. Who would have known your husband? With due respect to men, men in this house, men across the globe, with due respect to you, I say, and my husband knows, I am a happily married woman. I bless the name of the Lord. And I love my husband. Don't let us go there. If we tell, talk about that one, we'll not close. But guess what? I have told myself from way back, I don't want to die in the shadow of my husband. I don't want to be known alone as Mrs. That is why I confess to you today, when they are calling pastor's wife, I hardly remember I'm one. Not because I don't regard my husband, not because I don't recognize him as a pastor, but because the title of a pastor's wife does not stick to me. Pastor's wife is not a title. Because you are not the one they called. Have you heard anybody say, MD's wife, MD's wife, MD's wife? Have you seen a group of MD's wife? Ma, earn your respect. Become exceptional. Those who bicker, who murmur, who grumble, who gossip, and who cause trouble in the midst of women are people, honestly, who really are in finding fulfillment with their own life. So those who are making impact, they are threatened by them. But let me end it. I, I'm not here to condemn you and judge you. I could be in that shoes. And I'm telling you the truth. This morning, I rose and I told myself, I have discovered what it takes not to be I do. I discovered it this year. I discovered what it takes not to um, be bored. Can I give you for free? From today, when you want to sleep in the night, get a sheet of paper and do a to-do list for tomorrow. Did somebody hear what I said? Do a to-do list for tomorrow. When you do a to-do list for tomorrow, your tomorrow will not be wasted. I give you that for free. Let's come back so that I can close. And so, when you are making impact, people regard you for the impact you have made. We can be able to help us, able to help us, able to help us, yes, collective. But when push comes to shove, we know ourselves now. We know the people who carry this chair. We know the people who set the table. We know the people who did the t-shirt. So when they are regarding our leader, when they are regarding the assistant leader, when they are not regarding the, uh, uh, they are not regarding the head, they are regarding the assistant leader. I tell you, it's because it's the assistant leader that made the impact. The head is just head for nothing. Ma, don't be there for nothing. Be exceptional. One to bang bug big big be two bang be. Basically, context is not even what I want to. But if they are carrying and you are not carrying, who gives you regard? Why are they regarding your husband? Because he's a doer. Ma, when will you become a doer? The last person. The last person. I need to check the last person's name. Three of them. I have a lot of them. But I want to give you the best. And then I'll take my seat. Are you okay with me? You know, I already told you, you may not like me, but uh, I will say what they sent me. Hallelujah. And the last person come out. Oh, beautiful. Are these people they call daughters of Zelophead? The five daughters of Zelophead. I thank you, Holy Spirit. This is the best example, and that's why it's the last. I told you, you can change the dynamics of your family. This lady, their father died. He didn't have a boy. Five of them, they were girls. And they decided, this is how we'll be looking. And their father was wealthy. And their father had offended God and God had taken him. And they were going to share their father's property to all his brothers and all the even neighbors that don't know them. Because there was a law. 
You know what Jesus said? The law that was given to your ancestors is like this. But I have come to even tell you that apart from that one, there is another law. Because he came with a better covenant. And this lady said, ha, we will be looking all this world and then we will not be suffering. And as it's God will have it, they are not even married. The scripture does not say they were married. So the five of them in unity, they said, I don't know whether it was their elder sister, somebody had preached about this before and gave us the description of each one of them, the strengths that they have. And anyway, they decided that we're going to meet Moses. I mean Moses. And they confronted Moses and the elders and the high priest and said, Sir, we've, came to, we've come to make a plea, to make a case. Our father died. He left properties. They're going to share them to strangers and to our uncles. We want part of our father's asset. After all, we're his children. We may not be male, but we are his children. We carry his blood. Ah, Moses said, what are you talking about? You know he's against the law. And the Lord hushed Moses as he was talking called Moses into the chambers and said, what those ladies are saying is true. Go and give them a portion. Give them inheritance out of their father's land. It was an anomaly. Ma, on your account, policies will be changed. On your account, regulations will be changed. Where they say a woman cannot enter, because of you it will be changed. Where they say they will not bless a woman, because of you, things will change. You will become such a shaker and a mover such an exceptional being your voice will speak for other people and because of you other people who have suffered will no longer suffer Amen. that is what I stand for that is my mission on earth who says you cannot get up who says you cannot make it anytime I hear that my head hits themselves I say no whatever I need to do to help this person up I'm going to do it who says you will not have joy in your life? I am a joy carrier. I am a joy giver. It's a mandate. I make sure I step into that person's life. Whatever will give you joy, I do it. That's my mandate. And they got the inheritance. And God said, not only are you to give these ladies, from henceforth, every female whose father does not have male, they must share Part of the inheritance. My sisters, you did not meet the Zelophehad daughters. Those five ladies. You didn't meet them. You read about them. Some of you have not even read about them. Time didn't permit me to quote the scriptures for you, but I'm telling you their story. But look, today, you are a part of your father's inheritance because those ladies fought. We are thanking God for them today that we can have a voice as women because they got up and they spoke. Ma, who we thank God for you? Who is thanking God because you exist? Tomorrow, who is going to thank God because you exist? Today, who is thanking God? Who are the children you are fighting for today? Or everything is about, let my family be well. Let it be well with us. Let's even make this money first. Let's even build this house first. Pastor Yemisi has goals. She has an aspiration. But look at what she's doing. Look at the number of women she's carrying. Look at how she pulled her husband's hand into the matter. Even if pastor did not say, well, did you and this your women? He said, no, we have to do something about it. Look at how they are laboring so that our own lives can be better. Are you not blessing God for their lives? That is why when I came, I said, let's thank them. They are more than the Zelophehad's daughters. What's your name, ma? I don't know why I like you. Ma? What is your name? You heard what I said now. I don't want to die in the shadow of my husband. By the grace of God, I'm Mrs. Oriofe, but my name is Olumayoko. Oluwatosi. 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 In your life, it will become obvious that God is worthy to be served. Because your service will pay you. Do you serve God in this house? Come out. I don't know. My heart has just been going to her since. It's because of you I came down from the altar, actually. Grace is going to speak for you. Amen. In what area do you serve? Evangelism. You're an evangelist. Can I add to your name? Yes. Do you mind? Yes. They know me. He gives me names for people. From today, your name is Uluagbome. Before you call, he will hear. Amen. While you are yet speaking, he will answer you. Amen. The people you speak to, they will hear about Jesus. Amen. You will win many souls. Amen. I don't know why he's saying that, but Amen. 
Oluwa to si Oluwa gbohun e. In the name of Jesus. I don't know what you are crying for. I don't know what you need. I don't know what you want. Sorry? It's a cry of joy. Yes, no, I'm not even I, I didn't even see you crying. But I mean, I don't know what it is that is pressuring you that you are looking at like this. But I come in agreement with you this afternoon that the God who has heard your voice will bring it about Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. She said it's a cry of joy. You haven't yet seen cry of joy. You are just about to begin to cry for joy Amen. because of what God is going to do in your life Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. What do you have to do with children? School. You run a school. You teach in a school. You run a school. You own the school. Yeah, me see, come. You own the school. You run the school. Where's the school? Stand at the back. When I said I'll come with my team, I know what God will do. She's a school owner. We see passed in front of her school this morning when we're coming. And I know God has graced her. The property you use for your school, is it your own? I speak into your life. Yeah, me see, touch her from the back. The God who did it for her will do it for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I minister to you. You become exceptional in the industry where you serve. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. What is the name of your school? Fordrance Preparatory Do you mind I lay my hands? Fordrance Preparatory School. Begin to go further. Amen. Begin to go further. Amen. Let the name of that school start with the school itself. Amen. And let it show in the life of the children. Amen. I see two people, two people, they will carry the name of your school on their lips. They will begin to talk about it. Amen. And enrollment will begin to take place. Amen. I see a crowd. Amen. And I see a story building. Amen. I see a multi-purpose, a purpose-built school. Amen. I see the U-shaped school. Amen. Yes, Lord. I see the U-shaped school. Amen. I don't know where this location is, but I see a U-shaped school. Thank you, Jesus. Is it a crash? Is your school? Is what? It started. It's growing from a crash, and now, it's, and now it's, <laughs> you are busy. The person standing behind you has your story, and so in the name of Jesus, let it flow even to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Let's lift up our hands. Exceptional women. Exceptional women. I want to make a call. I want to make a call. I want to make a call for those who have heard what God said this afternoon. And you want to say to God, and trust me with this. Remember the scripture I read the first time? He said, I have more to tell you, but now you can't handle it. I don't know whether now you can handle it. If you can handle it, I want you to raise your hands. If you are able to kneel, kneel where you are and make a vow to God. I will go the extra mile. I will go the extra mile. I will not do the regular. When men stop at 10, I will take it to 100. If men stop for you at 20, I will take it to 200. Please don't make a vow that you will not keep. Don't make a vow that you will not keep. Rekaba shanta laka suta riandaba. Don't make a vow that you will not keep. Rekaba kashikari daraka santa yadaba santaba. You are talking to God. You are talking to God. You are not talking to man. You are talking to God. Somebody convenance yourself to God. This is not only a female message, it's a male message. It's a, it's, a, it's a human being message. It's a life message. I want to be exceptional. I want to be the next Zelovihad's daughter. I want to be the next Ayomek Bokwe and better. I want to put Nigeria in a good light. In the White House in America. I want to flank the flag of Nigeria. I want to be more than a Tobia Mushan to your state. <laughs> Exceptional woman. It's not about my possession. It's not about my money. It's about my heart and my commitment to God. I will go the extra mile. Don't joke this afternoon. You didn't come for food. You came. The food you want is what God has just served you. Your life must be different. It's an exceptional living. I am yato. Mba matata. One mom yato la ni o jaishani. Te mi lati yato sirere. Toba nda wola bonu. 
ko nse mi to ba npa won lomo ko nse mi to ba fo won leyin ko nse mi mo boju mi kuro mo boju mi soke si wa olorun and the god unto whom you turn to he will reward you in the name of jesus never again will i say i don't have bi bi ta tin nawo mi ni no yeye mi ni salo inti mo ni ma mule oluwa fi buku si la shakata kata kata riba center yadaba i pray for you today you will not play less on the journey of life you will be exceptional you will remember today 26 of november 2022 as the turn around point your attitude will change your customer service will become better your character will be fine when i say fine i mean refined your etiquette will be on another level you will know what to do you will know where to go you will know what to say you will know what not to say you will know that women don't fight you don't fight on the streets you know that gossiping is not your portion you will know that impact is what you are you are striving for your life will make impact thank you father in the mighty name of jesus father we thank you for this privilege and this opportunity thank you jesus for what you have done thank you for what you have done thank you for lives that you have touched thank you for transformation that is taking place even now in these lives thank you because this time next year oh god there will be abundance of testimonies thank you for that lady god spoke to by this time next year your baby will be in your hand you will be pregnant you will have your baby and your home will be sweet in the name of jesus blessed be your holy name our father in jesus name we have prayed able help us thank you for having me god bless you pastor mc thank you so much thank you sir thank you so very much sir shall we put our hands together to honor our mother in the lord put your hands together able help us and all our visitors so put, please put your hands together to honor her have you been blessed this afternoon that's the first dose say thank you ma more grace ma more anointing ma in the name of jesus praise the lord with that let us quickly give our offering please let's start serving let's serve our food as mommy was ministering another mother in the land walked in somebody asked me where do you see two of them i said grace grace can you shout grace? grace if you carry grace you will not be disgraced so i am standing here because i carry grace thank you mommies for coming when she was ministry another mommy in the land also walked in mommy shaba she has always been saying what's let me see i will be here but well, this one she did not call me she didn't even tell me thank you very much for supporting my vision i'm grateful ma thank you i love you so much thank you ma now if i introduce her tell you her name you know you will just say her with no na nah. <laughs> there's no need so i want us to give our offering for so ushers get us the basket in all strategic area so that there won't be any need for our people to come to the front do that quickly ushers do that quickly put the basket somewhere there package something for the lord with this word that you have listened to you have been blessed have been blessed in fact so many things god reveal that to me no wonder god said she should be here they nearly discouraged me but i thank god that was will i say i was determined eh? <laughs> and god helped me i believe you are blessed this afternoon so work with us for the year 2023 so that by next year you will remember today i will still repost our message you know like i did for mommy i did like, i will do the same so that you will remember by that time something good will have come out is that not so because you are please expect something great from me are you hearing me let's put it in the middle please at the middle of this something there there so that it should be easy for our people then you put one here put one here take the second one there are you ready to give your offering in the next few minutes by that please package mommy's pack package all the things you need to package on time 
she came with about eight of our mommies in the law i'm sorry i didn't introduce them they are from the try okay the prayer ministry okay the victorious prayers ministry abby you are from that because i was thinking you know she has so many groups like that which one should i introduce now okay the victorious prayer min women ministry please put your hands together to welcome them i know mommy have so many groups so these are part of them mommy can you please stand up so that they can honor you thanks for coming with our mommy thank you very much for your encouragement if i see you and even listening to your prayers i know we carry grace this afternoon anytime they are on fire i will say rabbi so i'm always connected thank you for coming god bless you ma and show mommy the lord will strengthen you all in jesus name and our god will continue to keep you keep you moving in jesus name please thank you ma you can have your seat let's give our offering have you packaged yours you know i told you this meeting is not for you to come and sit and eat if when it is given when i noticed she was speaking prophetically i die and put my hand in my back put bring, bring out something to give to the lord when you see some uh, prophetic uh, declaration i don't sit down attach your faith to it by giving are we said to give our offering okay can we have you who is leading us okay in the next few minutes you are okay can you rise your feet and dance a little move your body a little okay our people here you can drop your offering here Glorify yourself in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Oh, yeah, have your seats. Now, bring out the menu list. Take whatsoever you want. And our waiters will wait on us. Can we do that quickly? Pack all your baskets, ushers, take it all. Quickly do that. Let's start doing that. Come in, have your seat. Get the menu list. Tell them what you want. Take what you want quickly. Let's do that quickly. So, please, you will be serving us. 
and uh, we'll get our mommy, no, prepared. Why mommy? My opponent also, I 